Hello, Catalina here, coming to you from Loan Sense. Uh, today is October 2nd. The on-ramp to repayment has ended, but I wanted to come with um, a few pro tips on what you can be doing right now if you are, if you have a pause payment. Excuse me. Um, what can you be doing, especially if on your if you're on the public service loan forgiveness track or intend to get your loans forgiven through income-driven repayment? Um, what you could be doing right now, number one, is make sure all your up, your contact information is updated through your servicer as well as through studentaid.gov. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing you could be doing is making sure your payment count is accurate. I'm coming to you from my kitchen island, by the way, so excuse my refrigerator, um, coffee maker, such on the background. But um, the second thing you could be doing is um, making sure you have an updated payment count on the number of payments that your servicer has documented that you have made, okay? Um, if you are not public service and it's not available in Mohila, which public service is being transferred from Mohila, then I would actually send a letter to your servicer requesting an updated payment count. That's the second thing you could be doing. If your reflected payment count is not actually accurate based on how many payments you have been making and you have record of making these payments, uh, whether it's withdrawals from your bank account or any other record, then you should contact your servicer. And there's also a uh, filing a complaint button, which is on um, studentaid.gov slash feedback dash center. There is an option to submit a complaint not have an accurate payment count, this is a perfect place to start um, to submit a complaint so that, um, let's go continue without logging in. Let's take a, you can submit a complaint on behalf of yourself or someone else. I'm just going to say myself. Um, share, yes, you could share. I, I would recommend if you're trying to get an updated payment count to share your contact information. Um, let me just, oh, you can speak to an agent at an 800 number as well. Uh, repayment, uh, issues with my loans, you would click this. Um, continue to categorize complaint. Uh, you would select, for example, if you're having issues with the, um, payment count, then you can select uh, details about my loan right here. This is what I would select. Um, if your loans ha were supposed to be forgiven or you got a notice and haven't, you can always select this option. Um, yes, trouble repaying my loans. Um, this option you would select if, um, you are trying to submit payment or something and it's not getting counted, that's a circumstance under which um, you would select that. Um, so let's hit continue. Are your loans in default? I mean, you'd answer it according to what the answer is and um, you would describe, they want, Details about your loan. Um, how do I repay a grant over payment? Um, this is interesting. Uh, these are these are links you can click to learn more. But how you would describe your issue if your servicer did not accurately count your payment is you could say, for example, I made 101 payments towards my student loans, and my servicer is only acknowledging that I've made 89 payments. There is a miscount of 12 payments. I've already submitted this concern to my servicer. I have proof that I've made these extra payments, or if, if you don't, you don't say that. Um, a fair outcome to this issue would be to count the 12 payments that I've made that are not counted. And you would upload any documentation like what your servicer said your payments are versus any records if you have any of, of the amount of payments you have made. 
uh, who your servicer is. Uh, you would put here, this is a new servicer, by the way, CRI. Um, yes. And uh, if you contacted your servicer, you'd say yes. Uh, if you have not contacted the Department of Ed, you'd say no. Have you worked with other entities? Um, if this is something you're doing outside of Loan Sense, obviously you'd say no, but you would answer these additional questions. You'd click continue. Uh, I'm just going to fill this out to see what happens next. Um, let's just put no, no, no. Okay, let me just type in a few things just to see, just to get it moving forward. And then you would enter your personal contact information, including your uh, including your military status. Okay, so I didn't I didn't enter my contact. So this is one of the final steps. I'm gonna skip going forward, but I just wanted to go over the complaint um, system here so that you're aware and that it's available if you're having issues with your servicer and your student loan details. Um, this is time while we're in pause and or there's 10 million people who've made missed payments that we're gonna start getting our credit dinged. If you have any issues though with your student loans, the Department of Ed has streamlined an official way to file a complaint versus going to like the CFPB and doing this whole process. So I just wanted to use this video to share so that people can start getting accurate counts. Um, if you have not watched my video yet on how to, for example, you can even buy back time you spent in deferment. You could buy it towards PSLF. Um, you could let your servicer know there's no specific form that you want to buy back this time in deferment to count towards public service loan forgiveness as long as you can certify your employer during this time. You should be able to buy back time for the purpose of public service loan forgiveness. Let us know if you have any questions about that. We're available at myloansense.com. I will link the video on PSLF buyback as the next video for you to watch if that is relevant to you. If you find this information helpful, please like, please subscribe, and please share.